2.2.2 Implementation The implementation, testing, and integration of the new POA consensus on the VeChain Thor blockchain will go through multiple phases. We would expect a brand new testnet to be launched for the debugging and testing purposes. Moreover, the algorithm details of the new POA consensus mechanism will be published in multiple VeChain Improvement Proposals, or VIPs. 2.3 Meta Transaction Features Enhanced Transaction Model The VeChain Thor blockchain implements an Enhanced Transaction, or TX, model to tackle some of the fundamental problems that hinder the adoption of blockchain technology. 2.3.1 TX Uniqueness Every blockchain system has to find a way to uniquely identify each TX, or otherwise it would be vulnerable to the TX replay attack. For a UTXO-based blockchain like Bitcoin, TXs are linked and can be uniquely identified and verified by the associated spending history. However, such uniqueness no longer holds an account-based blockchain. For such systems, we need to inject some extra information into TXs to make them uniquely identifiable. The VeChain Thor blockchain achieves its TX uniqueness as follows. First, it defines the TX nodes as the 64-bit unsigned integer that is determined totally by the TX sender. Given a TX, it computes two hashes, the hash of the RLP encoded TX data without the signature and the hash of the previously computed hash concatenated by the sender's account address. The second hash, which is a 256-bit long, is used as TX ID to uniquely identify the given TX. Note that the calculation of TX ID does not require a private key to sign the TX. Further reading of the TX uniqueness here, follow the link. 2.3.2 .2, Multitask Transaction, MTT. The VeChain Thor blockchain allows a single transaction to carry out multiple tasks. To do that, we introduce the clause structure to represent a single task and allow multiple tasks defined in one transaction. A task is defined by fields to, value, and data. A clause array named clauses is then introduced in the transaction model to accommodate multiple tasks. The multitask mechanism has two interesting characteristics. The execution of tasks in a single TX is atomic meaning that either they are all executed successfully or rejected altogether. And tasks in a single TX are processed one by one in the exact order they are put in the clauses. The multitask mechanism provides a secure and efficient way to handle, for instance, tasks such as fund distribution, token airdrops, or mass product registration. 2.3.3 Forcible Transaction Dependency the VeChain Thor blockchain provides a safety mechanism that allows users to force a TX to depend on the success of another TX. It has been done with the help of field depends on in the TX model. If depends on has been assigned a valid TX ID, the system will check the status of the referred TX. Only if the status says successful, then the current TX will be accepted for processing. Here, by successful, we mean two things. One, the referred TX has been included in the ledger, and two, it has been executed without being reverted. The second requirement is particularly important since seeing a TX included in the ledger does not guarantee that it has been successfully executed. A TX can be included, but with a status reverted, which means that the system does not actually do what the TX asks it to do. For the dependent TX, there is no limitation on who sends it or when it is sent, or what it is about. It offers developers much required flexibility. For the reading of the forcible transaction dependency here, click the link. 2.3.4, Transaction Lifecycle Control. The VeChain Thor blockchain gives users control of the life cycle of the TXs they send. In particular, users can tell the system when is the earliest time their TXs can be processed and how long a pending TX expires via fields block ref and expiration defined in the TX model. Block ref can be used to store the reference to a particular block whose next block is the earliest block the current transaction can be processed. Expiration stores a number that can be used together with block ref to specify when the transaction expires. 
Specifically, the sum of expiration and the first four bytes of block ref infers the height of the last block that the current TX can be packed into. The transaction lifecycle control is particularly useful when the blockchain is running at high capacity because it gives users and developers definite control over when the transaction is executed or abandoned, which is highly demanded by business applications. 2.4 TX fee delegation. TX fee delegation mechanism is a mechanism that allows ordinary people to be able to use decentralized applications, dApps, without having to purchase cryptocurrencies and directly paying the TX fee calls during their interactions with dApps. In this way, users, when using dApps, could have the same kind of experience when they are using normal mobile or web based apps nowadays, and this is crucial for the mass adoption of blockchain technology especially under the stage when the regulation on cryptocurrency is still not clear. The VeChain Thor blockchain is the first public blockchain that successfully implemented the TXV delegation mechanism. There are currently two protocols running on the VeChain Thor blockchain that enable such a mechanism, the multi-party payment, the MPP protocol, and the designated gas payer protocol. The former exists as a built-in protocol from day one of the mainnet launch, while the latter was proposed in VIP191 and implemented on July 22nd in the VeChain Thor version 1.1.2 release. 2.4.1 MPP MPP allows an account on the VeChain Thor blockchain to pay fees for TXs sent from some designated accounts. As illustrated in the above figure, there are three types of accounts that involve the protocol. User is the account sending the TX. Payer is the account receiving TXs from the user and paying the TX fee, and the master, which is the account from which the TX fee is actually deducted from. Master can be either payer itself, if it is a normal account, or the account deploys payer if it is in a contract account, such as a contract with code. Users can use the built-in contract prototype to set up the MPP relation between payer and user. Once such a relation has been established on chain, when executing a TX from user to payer, the VeChain Thor blockchain will attempt to deduct TX fee from one of the three accounts in the order of master, which is equal to or greater than the payer, which is equal to or greater than the user. Users owning multiple master accounts can also set up a sponsor account such that all the TX fees are deducted from a single sponsor account rather than from individual master accounts, easing the work of managing multiple on-chain accounts. Find more details about MPP here through the link. 2.4.2 VIP191 Designated Gas Pair It is clear that MPP was designed from the point of view of a DAP owner who controls multiple contract accounts running on chain. It is the sole responsibility of the owner to set up MPP and the protocol can only affect TXs sent to these contracts. Moreover, since MPP requires writing data on chain and therefore causes certain overhead costs, it is more cost effective to use the protocol for a relatively stable relationship between a user and the DAP rather than some temporary arrangement. VIP191 is aimed to supplement MPP in order to provide more flexibility for TX-free delegation on the VeChain Thor blockchain. In particular, it allows a TX sender to seek for an arbitrary party, not necessarily the TX recipient, who is willing to pay for the TX. The protocol works quite simple. It requires both the TX sender and pair to put their digital signatures in the TX. The sender also needs to turn on the VIP191 feature to inform the system that it is a VIP191 enabled TX. Once the TX is accepted and executed, the fee will be deducted from the payer account. Comparison. In comparison to MPP, VIP191 gives control back to TX senders to activate the protocol. Moreover, it does not introduce any overhead cost. However, it does require the TX sender and payer to be both online to complete the TX while MPP does not. In terms of transparency, MPP is the better option since the payer will have to explicitly put his or her intention to fund TXs from a particular account on chain via executing functions on contract prototype. Implementation. 
VIP191 has been implemented in the Thor version 1.1.2 release. There have been two major changes made to implement this protocol, extending the TX model and adding extra logic for deciding the actual gas pair for the VIP191 enabled TX. Field reserved in the TX body structure has been redefined to be a type of reserved as shown below. Within the line structure, we define field features as a bitmap where each bit marks the status 1 for on and 0 for off of a particular feature. For VIP191, the least significant bit is used. Moreover, VIP191 requires two valid signatures to be introduced in the TX. The TX's sender signature is concatenated by the payer signature and assigned to field signature as usual. Moreover, the protocol requires the payer to sign the TX ID, which is a unique identifier of the TX. The extra logic brought by VIP191 is added in function by gas in the Go source file thordir backslash runtime backslash resolved underscore tx.go. When determining which account pays the fee, the system first checks whether there is a dedicated payer. If the answer is yes, then it tries to deduct the initial cost of the TX from the payer's balance. If the balance is too low, the system will return an error. Otherwise, it will mark the payer in the runtime context associated with the TX and pass on the context to the code that executes its clauses. Further reading of VIP191 designated gas payer here. Follow the link. 2.5 on-chain governance mechanism, pure technical. The VChain Thor blockchain's on-chain governance is about stakeholders or its governing body making decisions on some critical on-chain actions and executing those actions. The governing body of the mainnet is the steering committee of VChain Foundation. The actions can, for instance, be authorizing or revoking consensus validators, such as the authority masternodes, changing network parameters, such as the base gas price and block reward ratio, or any on-chain activity embodied by a smart contract deployed on the VChain Thor blockchain. On-chain governance consists of three phases, decision-making, authorization, and execution. Decision-making is the first phase where decisions on executing certain on-chain actions are made. Decisions are obtained through voting. Voting can be conducted either on-chain via a voting contract or off-chain within the governing body. The former provides maximal transparency and often involves all stakeholders, while the latter complements the former to offer efficiency and agility. Authorization is the second phase where a voted on-chain action is proposed to the governing body for final approval. Each proposal has to be approved by a majority of the members of the governing body. It is an extra security measure put in place to safeguard on-chain governance against malicious activities such as exploitation of voting contract vulnerabilities. Execution is the final phase of on-chain governance. Once a proposal has been approved by the required majority, anyone can trigger the execution of the on-chain action defined in the proposal. The VeChain Thor blockchain provides a flexible framework for implementing the described on-chain governance as illustrated in the above figure. At the center of the framework is contract executor that is deployed both on the mainnet and testnet. Contract executor provides functions propose and approve to carry out the authorization phase. Only authorized voting contracts or members of the governing body can invoke function propose open parentheses, target, underscore, contract, underscore, address, comma, encoded, underscore, data, close parentheses, semicolon, marked by one in the above figure, to submit a proposal in executor. The two function arguments define an on-chain action, such as invoking a specific function at a specific target contract address. A proposal is an instance of struct proposal stored in executor and is created by function propose. Once a proposal is logged in executor, 
members of the governing body are giving a one-week time to authorize it. Each member can invoke function approve, marked by two in the above figure, to complete his or her authorization. The execution phase is implemented simply by function execute of contract executor. Once a proposal has been approved by the required majority, two-thirds by default, of members of the governing body, anyone can invoke function execute to trigger the execution of the on-chain action defined in the proposal using low-level call function target underscore contract underscore address dot call open parentheses encoded underscore data close parentheses semicolon. It is often a safety practice that we code the target function of the target contract such that it can only be invoked by executor. In this way, we are guaranteed that the action can only be executed after going through the process of on-chain governance. A good example of such a contract is the built-in contract authority that manages authority masternodes. Finally, a voting contract must be authorized before it can call function propose to submit proposals. Contract executor provides functions attach voting contract and detach voting contract to manage the list of authorized voting contracts. Note that both functions have been coded such that they can only be invoked by executor itself, meaning that any change to the list has to be done through on-chain governance. It makes sure that voting contracts are managed securely and transparently. Further reading on on-chain governance can be clicked on here. 2.6 Built-in Smart Contracts There are seven built-in smart contracts deployed on the VeChain Thor blockchain. Their source code can be found in path Thor underscore root forward slash built-in forward slash gen. They are called the built-in contracts not only because they are shipped together with the Thor source code, but because many of their methods are implemented natively in Go rather than in Solidity for the sake of efficiency. In fact, all functions whose names begin with native are such methods. Whenever these functions are called, the system will intercept the normal EVM procedure and run the native Go code instead. Here we give some brief description of each of the built-in contracts. Number one, source code, authority.soul, deployed address, 0x, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 4 1 7 5 7 4 6 8 6 F 7 2 6 9 7 4 7 9 Contract Authority provides methods to deal with the Authority Masternodes, the AMS. Users can use functions get to query the status of a particular AM and use first and next to iterate existing AMs. It also provides functions add and revoke to authorize and deauthorize an AM. These two functions can only be invoked by Contract Executor via on-chain governance. Number two. Source code energy dot soul. Deployed address zero x zero 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 four five six E six five seven Two six seven seven nine. Contract Energy defines the interface for the operations on VTHO. Number three. Source code executor dot soul. Deployed address zero x zero 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 four five seven eight six five six three seven five seven four six F seven two 
Contract Executor provides methods to facilitate on-chain governance on the VeChain Thor blockchain. We have provided extensive discussion on it in the previous section, which is a click-through. Number four, source code extension dot soul. Deployed address, 0x0000000000000 Seven eight seven four six five six E seven three six nine six F six E. Contract extension is implemented to allow contract code to query information on a previous block or be aware of the runtime information of the current TX. For the former purpose, it provides methods block ID, block total score block time, and block signer, while for the later purpose, it provides methods total supply, TX proved work, TX ID, TX block ref, and TX expiration. We can also invoke the natively implemented Blake2 hash function via method Blake2B256. Number five, extension dash V2 dot soul. Deployed address 0x0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
zero x zero 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 five zero seven two six f seven four six f seven four seven nine seven zero six five Contract prototype is implemented to facilitate MPP and query information of a particular account. For the former purpose, it provides methods master, set master, credit plan, set credit plan, is user, user credit, add user, remove user, sponsor, unsponsor, is sponsor, select sponsor, and current sponsor. To query account information, it provides methods balance, energy, has code, and storage for.